Hello, welcome back. Um, this one's actually a relatively simple turn. Um, message from Sel Selenia, first of all. I am writing my name on the moon. Um, Selenia is about to cast some kind of spell in the capital that will destroy like a fifth of the world or something. Or has the potential to do that. It does something like destroys the moon. Or... <laughs> Or it offends the moon in such a way that it retaliates against the world. I'm not sure exactly. But if the majority of our worms are suddenly wiped out in the next couple of turns, uh, it will be due to whatever Selenia is about to do. Uh, we cast Forest Donut over our new throne. Did the usual spells. Um, and there were a couple of um, provinces that changed hands. Nothing too interesting. Uh, Minache we took back off La Mancha. Cliff Coast uh, was another giant stack of Rudin units that's now on our border over here. Uh, Melma was just um, over here where I'm kind of raiding. It was quite nice this one because there was a, a random mage in the province, but unfortunately he managed to escape. Um, this is the army that I've had kind of like stealthing around and I'm, I'm just I'm still stealthing around and I'll just pick off provinces when I can to be annoying. Uh, Niffle we also took back, there was nothing there. Uh, Pika's uh, another province over here. It's another giant stack of um, iron knuckles though. I think we just kind of have to accept that there's probably like a dozen or so of those giant stacks in any one portion of the world. Kind of like my worms I suppose. Uh, we got hit by a lightning again. Nobody died this time fortunately. Um, and also uh, Vengeful Water killed one of our scouting acolytes over here. And there was one other battle as well, which is that the Myriad attacked a province that had uh, a Garudan army in it. I wanted to check actually. Yeah, they dropped to 5 combat speed in Swamp. And just to get one kill. And that's that. Um, so that was an army that actually stopped the Myriad this time. It didn't just hit some random empty province. Um, the Myriad will come back though, don't worry. He'll still continue harassing provinces. Um, as for events, nothing too interesting. It's mostly just um, site development. There was one um, actual random event that was interesting though, which was that we got 460 gold and a sword of swiftness as well. I've given that to the um, knight that I was gearing up. Um, yeah, relatively simple turn. There's lots of red arrows, but it's mostly just moving worms around. Um, in Old Forest now, where we're agitating the Maya finally, after a very long time not doing that, um, we now have like, well over 200 and... Oh wow, well over 300... well over 400 worms actually. Yeah, we need to start leveling these worms up. So we're going to start agitating the Maya every turn, getting some corpses to feed these guys. Um, the spell that Selenia just cast, I'm pretty sure is going to hit for event damage, which is 8. So I need the, I need my worms to be above 8 hit points as soon as possible, just in case um, that triggers something, because I don't want to lose all of these to one giant event. I'm not entirely sure what that event is going to be, guys, but we have to brace ourselves with some weird stuff going down from Selenia. Um, other than the worms, there are only two provinces now where I'm mounting some kind of defense. Um, one is against this stack here. I think this stack might roll into me. I'm not sure. Um, just to remind you, that is this giant line of troops. It's entirely mundane, there's no mages. But these units are of course self-blessing. Um, so if they decide to go into germ, I'm going to try and defend it. I put the province defense up to 24 because we did have a little bit of gold this turn from that event. Um, and I'm just moving what I can. Um, the plan really is just to put all of the good units in a big block and then buff them for a couple of turns while the wave of worms walks forwards. And then alongside that I'm going to have a water mage casting quagmire to drop those iron knuckles down to 5 move speed. And then on top of that I also have um, a subsument who's been given earth boots and the spell focus that uh, MYT was wearing a long time ago. Uh, and some earth gems and he'll be in the communion, of course, and he's going to cast um, Curse of Stones. So that's two spells that will 
reduce combat speed. I'm not sure they'll stack. I'm not sure if it'll just be enemies will have the slow effect. But still, I think um, dumping lots of slow and fatigue and encumbrance on those units is probably pretty good. Once those spells have gone off, the tidal waves of worms will hit them, and then there'll be this nice block of quite good units that will hopefully have some, um, well at least some ethereals and maybe some quicknesses on them. I think there's a quickness guy here. Maybe not, maybe that's the other army. Um, but definitely some iron warriors and some body ethereals. That's the plan over here. The same sort of story over here, we, we know that this giant army that does have mages has just taken Lemnos. I'm just building up force in this province. Um, using the same strategy as well. We've got the good units all here on hold, all getting buffed up. And that includes lots of protection from fire as well. So fire resistance from one water mage, and there's another water mage doing it as well. Uh, this one. This army also has a quagmire, and of course it also has the um, spirits of points as well. So we're going to be alternating body ethereal and luck on all these people. Um, because last time we saw this army, it mostly just did fog warriors and mass flight. Um, but those units still only have um, mundane weapons, so a bunch of flying units surround us and we're just laying down Iron Warriors, Ethereal Luck, our Regen Bless on all of these, um, mostly the Splendor. They should survive quite a while. I mean, there's lots of Splendor here. This is 30, this is 40, 50 of them, plus the Tidal Wave of Worms eventually. I'm hoping it's sufficient. The spirits, are, there's going to be a lot of spirits all on fire. Um, the spirits are innate spellcasters. As they move or attack with normal weapons. Yeah, so I think if I have them on fire, they'll still cast spells. So that's if he moves out of here into us. There's no guarantee that he will. Um, our, our goal other than that, though, is still just reinforcing our thrones. Um, which I am still doing. Uh, we had enough gold down in Norfangs that I'm actually able to upgrade the fortress and build a lab. And that is actually really important because we do have a Great Red Moor in this throne as well. Um, thrones of course have lots of sites, so sometimes that will block the Great Red Moor from ever spawning. Um, so it might be that we'll never get one in Florian because it might have too many magic sites. Um, but Norfangs has one, and so I'm teleporting uh, a mage Norfangs this turn. Uh, where are, are you? I think it might be Idrif. No, Idrif's teleporting to my cap. Uh, there's another one casting Peristaltic Passage somewhere. Uh, it's this guy. So he is teleporting to Norfangs to do uh, Strange Bedflows next turn. So we'll start having a nice chunk of defense on this throne, this throne, and this throne, and then we just need to take this one, then we'll be up to four. And then after that, I'm not sure what throne we'll go after next. This one looks doable, because I don't know what's happened to Dion Dracut. He is still taking his turns. Um, but I don't know. Doesn't really seem to be doing much at the moment. He might be someone that we try rolling through in order to get to this throne. And then there's another throne down here held by Selenia, but that one might be a bit more difficult. Um, and after that, we're going to have to take some of Gerudo's thrones somehow. Spirits might help us with that though, because they can teleport everywhere. So you might think about gearing up some spirits with loads of items. Um, they don't have many slots, mostly misc slots. If we do that, we'll have to think about how we actually siege. <laughs> hmm. uh, that's the turn though. Not much else going on, I don't think. Oh, of course, there's one other thing. I'm up to 24 pearls per turn. So I'm going to try casting Akashic Knowledge each turn. Um, Akashic Knowledge is the 25 pearl site searching spell that searches for every site. Um, I don't think I've ever cast this before, not for real. So I'm going to give it a shot. Let's see if this starts generating tons of gems for us. So it's set to cast monthly at the moment. We're going to need some of our pearls to put up bedfellows, of course. And um, we could get Bedfellows up in Robber Home if we can't do it in Pepper Plane, which would also be pretty good. So those will be our next two targets, Norfangs and Pepper Plane maybe? In, um, Norfangs and Robber Home maybe? Um, but until then, yeah, I'll give that spell a try. See what happens. 
Uh, and that's it for this turn. So that was turn 48. Oh uh, yeah, this game is a bit of a mess at this point. It's very difficult to know where to move or where to go or what to do. But I'm hoping that once I've locked down my thrones and I feel safe, I've started putting eggs in them and they've got all the domes, and I can start projecting force from those points. Um, most other nations at this point can kind of sack the rest of their provinces, I think. As long as they hold the thrones, that's enough. But in our case, our sites give us all of our units and our gems, so... I don't know. Maybe we have a harder time holding stuff. I guess we'll see what happens anyway. Uh, that was 1048. I'll see you on 1049. Hello, welcome back. Another relatively simple turn. Um, search for sites a lot in Elder Hill because we had nothing else to do. We did actually find a site and it's a really nice one as well. So, um, Rust Water. Two Water Gems, two Earth Gems and a Fire Gem. Really nice. Um, we also cast Akashic Knowledge this turn. Um, and found three sites. So I cast this on the throne since I assumed they'd have some sites. Enchanted Tomb for one Death Gem. Bane Fire Braziers for a Fire and a Death Gem. And a Bone Door Tower for another Death Gem. So, nice turn for um, sites actually. Battles next, there weren't too many that were interesting, it's mostly just a few raids and stuff. Um, but Gerudo did attack into Jome, which is where we'd tried to defend. So it's a mundane stack against a big clump of stuff that I had. The teeth in the hills are quite well matched against these troops because they are... Oh, one moment. Because they are ethereal, uh, which is good because his units only have um, mundane weapons. And they also have innate cold resistance as well. So in addition to the bless helping them with the heat aura, they also naturally are resistant to the chill aura as well. Um, in this battle, we did cast um, Quagmire and then the big red blast then was... Um, Curse of Stones, which does hit a few people. I'll try and find one. Okay, maybe it didn't hit a few people. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, so this unit now has a combat speed of 4. Uh, swamp. And um, Curse of Stones isn't lifted, listed, but it is um, the... They get even slower if they get slimed. Oh, this guy's on a combat suit of two right now. <laughs> That's quite funny. The one who has um, Curse of Stones as well, that would be really cool. This guy. Oh, he hasn't been slowing though. Nah. I wonder if they can get all the way down to combat speed zero just from slows. Maybe one of these guys. I don't know. We drop a lot of slows in this battle. Uh, the worms still unfortunately are getting got. They're also on fire, which I'm not sure... Does he actually cause burning? We're in a snowstorm right now, which seems kind of odd, but... I'll speed things up anyway now. But um, yeah, a lot of our troops just get killed by these things. And the only thing that can stand up against them is the Teeth in the Hills. Who are pretty well matched against them. But yeah, other than that, they um... They killed all of my Worms, they killed all of my Splendor. Um... They're yeah, pretty rough. We did kill 127 of them though, which is... something. Um, yeah, so that that was a nice defense, but that kind of stalls that little army we had there now. <laughs> they have to run away and um, regroup. Um, lightning from a malicious god killed uh, one of our mouths of the Firebad Church, which is really sad because we can't replace those anymore. We've got no gold. Uh, lost another scout as well. Events. Uh, most of these are just my events, but there are some, like in Summerlands here, 
where pure magical power rained down from the moon, killing almost everyone who was nearby. Afterwards, the very air was thick with magic and madness. Um, yeah, we got that in a lot of provinces. There's one in Germ as well. Um, Queen Forest. It mostly just kills population there. Only a few units get killed. Uh, we don't care too much about our population because um, we don't have many <laughs> population left anymore. Uh, this column here is our income, com income column. You can see most of the provinces are down to zero now because there's no one left. Um, yeah, but the, the moon did retaliate. Uh, there were a couple of gem events as well. We got an onyx priestess in the robber home, which is interesting. Uh, robber home is over here. Onyx priestess. Death one with um, holy two. And then the last two events are just gems. So quite a lot of gems. Um, our gem income is now <laughs> pretty ridiculous in terms of astral death and nature. 35 death gems is pretty cool. A lot of those are from Myers, but we've also found a lot of sites. Uh, and that's it for messages. And not much else going on in terms of actions either. Um, this is the army that just defended Germ. Gonna head to Robber Home to just kind of regroup a bit. Um, the plan is still to just fortify my thrones for a few turns. So I'm flying uh, a Water Four Mage over towards Pepper Plain next to put a Frost Dome over it. And um, we've almost finished curing all of our diseases. Uh, everyone in Pepper Plains is cured, Robber Home is cured. This stack just has one guy left who's diseased. Um, but there's two disease curing commanders in the province and I've moved the, the last disease curing item to Nadina here. Hopefully that cleans up all the disease. We can then start curing some of the units as well if you we want to. Probably good to cure the diseases on the teeth in the hills. And maybe the splendor if there's any left who are diseased. But yeah, it's quite a few. After that we'll hit our research target quite soon. Um, so we'll start summoning eggs to put in all of our thrones as well. And then I think at that point I'm just going to keep any units that come out of this bedfellows just sit in the throne forever. Any units that come out of probably this one, well we'll get up another bedfellows enchantment over here soon. They'll sit in this one. And um, I'm casting strange bedfellows in Norfangs this turn so that will fortify itself as well. Once those are stable, we can use all of the rest of the units we get to try and take another throne. The two that are most tempting at the moment are certainly this one, as soon as this resolves, and maybe uh, this one as well. We've got quite an easy route to over here. We could probably start pushing in. It's a shame that we lost so much stuff here. I think I need to start preserving the lives of my teeth in the hills to do actual, like, proper fights against Gerudo. It seems like my best unit to deal with them. I should stop stop just like throwing them around in, in battles pointlessly. Uh, yeah, the guy in Norfang's doing Bedfellows, he's going to be on Bedfellows duty now I think. We need to replace the enchantment in Holoma next, that's on three months. We'll teleport up here um, to rob a home, get Bedfellows down there. Maybe we can do it in Vilia soon. It's up to 8 candles and only 1400 population. Oh uh, yeah. And other than that, the only thing I'm doing is just defending Elder Hill still. Everyone's just sitting here. Um, this stack can't go anywhere. You can either go back into Lemnos, run away, attack the Mancha or attack me, so... I'm just gonna sit here for a second. And while I'm sitting here, I, I, I would just like crash into him or try and move around, but I've got Idruf here, who we've given this... We crafted this Crown of Command like 20 turns ago and never used it. Given him the Crown of Command and he's loaded up with trees and worms. Um, and he's going to um, Peristaltic Passage into Elder Hill, so he'll also be part of this army. Which is still just set up as a block of dudes at the front, buffing up, junk in the back. Um, and Idrif will be scripted to uh, do Strength of Goa, Howl, and then Raz the Tangleheart if he's got the endurance for it. It'll be interesting if he crashes into this, because he might beat us. I mean, it's a very, very big stack with lots of mages, and his troops are very powerful. Um, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> but that's it for this turn. I'm not forging anything. I, I would like to have another couple of um, Thistle Maces and stuff. 
Yeah, I still like our, our research targets though. We'll get Enchantment 7, pick up the construction items, and then we might go all the way to Enchantment 9 and try and get um, between cast. We can probably start alchemizing, uh, not alchemizing, um, empowering someone up in Astral, because we've got so many pearls now. Generating 25 a month. I just need a Kashik to find some more pearl sites. Quite nice. Uh, anyway. Need turn. Yes, 26 commanders sitting in that province doing nothing. Uh, that was turn 49. Thanks for watching. This is the first time I've done my turn and DM Dracket has already done this, so they are definitely still in the game, even though they've, been, they've become very passive since they kind of suicide ended to my throne. But uh, yeah, I'll see you on turn 50. Hello, welcome back. Uh, we cast some spells as usual. Got our research done it in Conjuration. We can now poach Tangle our eggs. Uh, unfortunately, we have more pressing concerns, so we can't start doing this just yet. Uh, but it's there. We also have the groups of medium-sized elementals, spells, and uh, a few other things. I'm going to switch to enchantment and try to go all the way to 8. I don't know how likely that is. Um, but 8 puts us on the route towards mass regeneration, which would be quite nice. Um, and one level after that we'd have Unbetween, but I'm also not sure how likely it is that we'll get that far. But down to 322 research, unfortunately. Uh, we also cast a cash Knowledge this turn. I, I accidentally targeted it at my throne that has a frost dome over it. So we got blasted by cold. Uh, fortunately we survived though. And found no sights. So we risked death and spent 25 pearls for nothing. Lovely. Uh, we raided the Eaton's here with our little army. That went fine. And in Ionia we discovered... No, this was one flame witch attaching Ionia. And um, summoning a fire elemental. Which is all it takes to kill my worms, unfortunately. So, just this, uh, versus this. Doesn't go very well. Uh, so we lost Ionia. And then, there was also a large battle in Elder Hill. Uh, this seems impossible. I don't know what to do about this army at all. I was thinking relief might help a bit. To deal with fatigue from the auras. Um, but yeah, spoilers, this army just kind of walks over us. Let's put it on turbo. We do quagmire and we do our spells. We buff up. But um... We don't have anyone here who can drop like big evocations, which might be used more useful. And our troops just aren't very good at doing damage through mist form and 21 protection. So I mean it doesn't go very well. Uh Elder Hill. He has almost three hundred of these things. I don't really know how you beat that with what we have. It's tricky because we've been at war for so long that we're probably a little bit behind on research. We certainly should have more commanders and units than we do because we've been constantly losing. We don't even have like a terribly good position in terms of like the amount of terrain we should have. We should have all of this which we lost and we should have all of this which we couldn't quite finish. Um, but it just seems like he just has so much stuff. Apparently the other players have just kind of like... I, I know like Cassia and Selena are both just trying to deal with him on their own. Which is why they pulled away from me so early and why Cassia's left me alone. It's because they're both just trying to deal with him. I assume La Mancha might be trying to as well. Um, he just has those giant sex everywhere. I think his nation might just be busted to be honest with you. Um... It feels weird saying that though, because I know that, like, I'm playing a free spawn nation as well, but my starting units aren't like great <laughs> um, compared to those things. If I, if they are, I don't really understand if they are free spawn or not. I think the thieves might be free. I don't know how these I think are just very easy to get when you have um, death skills, and he has death skills. 
so they cost him nothing. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we are a bit behind on research though, because he's got all the big uh, mass buffs which we just can't get because we've been at war for the entire game. Um, but I don't know. Um, events weren't too interesting. There's some gem events and a gold event, and uh, in the Forest of Gone we can now recruit... What are they? Brigands? <laughs> villains. Um, so we got a free villain site. Um, that's every everything else is just um, sites and stuff. This was an interesting one. I guess because there was no province defense in Erebon, the Fickle Myriads counts as an independent. It's like we took it and then this thing went independent and um, took it back for independence, which is funny. Uh, nothing else too interesting in messages. Alright, so what do we do now? Well, literally every single thing I have is going to try and defend Norfangs now. Uh, I'm moving all the mages and units that I can to either Summerland, Javelkish, or Norfangs itself. And over here I've got all of my like big nature mages are all heading to Old Forest to pick stuff up. And I'm forging items that will help them... Um, help them to um, Peristaltic Passage stuff. So I'm getting some Thistle Maces if they need extra nature magic. Uh, I'm forging some Whips of Command as well. Um, these are just for the purposes of casting the teleport spell, they'll give us 100 extra command. So that's all I'm forging those for. Uh, I'm just trying to, going to try and like passage as much stuff as possible into Norfangs and hopefully he tries and takes it because it's a throne and then we can have another defense. Moving stuff up to Pepper Plane with the same thing, we've got a caster here who can do passage. He's ready with a lot of stuff to move it all. Yeah, that's literally what every arrow is, is just moving stuff towards Norfangs now. Even the kind of nice stuff that was sitting in Florian to defend it, like all of the subsumants, they're all going to try and walk over there in two turns. Um, it's currently late spring, so I'm hoping the snow melts next turn, and we'll be able to move from Vilia to Norfangs. But that might not happen. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to put as much stuff as possible in Norfangs, and then we'll try a different approach other than just um, sitting still and buffing, because I don't think buffing is going to work. I think having the subsumments would be nice because we can set up a, an evocation communion and try doing um, uh, Moors of the Earth and stuff. Although Moors of the Earth itself might be bad because does that struggle to hit... Um, where would it be? Is it alt? I think it's alt, right? Doesn't affect flying or floating units. Oh yeah, so the mass flight cancels that out. Maybe not Moors, but we'll certainly set up some kind of evocation communion, which I think would be better against this now. Um, yeah, everything else is just running away. Uh, unfortunately, one of our um, spirits of points went insane this turn, so I've just put them on retreat. Hopefully, they get out of there. Um, the we caught a scout in this province this turn who had a fire bow, uh, which is why. He's currently holding a fire bow, if you're wondering. This looks like a... is this a mod item? I guess it's a mod item. It's a research booster? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's all we're doing, is um, trying to move to Norfangs. And there's one other movement up here which is just attacking this province because it's got a temple in it. And one other movement over here which is just a harassment. Uh, but this looks pretty bad. I mean, if this stack just rolls into me and kills me here, that'll be it pretty much. I'm uh, not sure what to do. Oh, one last thing. I'm casting Baleful Star on this deck because I've got nothing else I could do over here. Uh, that'll just curse everyone. Why not? Might help a bit. Um, so that was turn 50? I think that's turn 50. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you next time.